Welcome back to the channel, everybody. <laughs> There's Walt. So, a lot of people are wondering how are the kid goats doing since we weaned them from their mother. So, we're going to go talk about that here in just a minute. But there's one thing I need to update everybody on. So, at the expo, Rachel and I both had a lot of people asking us about Cora, whether she ever had puppies or not. So, that's what we're going to go talk about right now. Um, we'll just... We'll take out two birds with one stone, you might say. Um, I'm uh, fixing the feed. I probably won't feed in this video. We're going to come out here and talk about a few things with the goats and talk about Cora. And uh, I smell a skunk. That's never a good sign. It's usually That's usually a sign that the dog's got a hold of a skunk. When you live on a farm with livestock guardian dogs and you smell a skunk, that's not a... Something you want to walk out and smell. But better than them eating the chickens, I guess. So you can see the mamas aren't leaving their babies too far. They're still hanging around. They're just right on the other side of the fence. I've had a few kids get their heads stuck in the fence already this morning. Um, they're trying to reach through and give their mamas some sugar, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> That's just part of it. It was a noisy night last night. Um, and when I say that, it wasn't just the goats. Cora cried absolutely all night long. We had to keep coming out here and uh, comforting her and just make sure she was okay. Because at first, I thought her and Lisky got into it. Look, they all think it's, they all think it's feeding time. But it's not. So Cora absolutely hates this. So you can see we got some of the kids right here. We got Miss Cora and Lisky. They were hanging out over here in the woods in the shade. Come on, Cora, let's walk down here. You wanna go talk to everybody? Everybody's wanting to know about the puppy situation. Huh? You wanna go talk? Come on, let's go talk. Let's go get in the shade. There's Mr. Lisky. What you doing, Bubba? Come on, Miss Cora. All right. Come on, Titty. What are you doing? Was you napping? I seen you get out from underneath the kids' fort. So the kids got an old fort over there with a tarp on it. And uh, the dogs like to sleep underneath it. Daisy used to sleep underneath it, too. It's nice shade and it's a nice little hangout for everybody. Come here, Cora. So, <clears throat> you guys might have noticed in some of the videos here recently... Cora is whimpering and crying a lot. Well, she did that all night long. Come here, sissy. Come here, Cora. Come on. Now I feel bad if she's going to be in the sun. Man, I still smell a skunk. You don't have skunk on you, do you? Huh? I swear I smell a skunk. And now it smells, it smells like it's on my hands. I didn't even think about that when I came out here and started petting him. All right, Cora, if you're going to be in the sun, I'm going to sit here with you. What's wrong? Are you upset about these goats? Huh? Are you upset? Oh, you got a tick right here, girl. Let me get that tick. I can't get it. I can't get it. It's right in the eye. So, so, real quick, talking about the ticks. Um, we give our dogs a Brevecto peel. It's good for about three months three to four months usually. They do get ticks on them, but the ticks bite them and they immediately die and they fall off. So if you see one on your dog and they're taking the Brevecto pill, if you can't get it off, don't worry about it because it will fall off. But if you can't get it, it's always good to get it off. So I'm gonna try to get her to follow me in the shade. Come here, it's too hot out here, come on. I smell skunk, I promise I smell skunk. I don't see one, but I smell one. So, I know I'm skipping around a little bit. So, uh, come here, Cora. Come here. When I say Cora, and guess who comes? Come here, sis. Come here. Come here. So, <clears throat> Cora's been whimpering. And this started before we weaned the goats. If you smell like a skunk, come out to go take a shower. Lay down. Uh, Cora never did have the puppies. Um, if you guys are new to the channel, I'm going to back up and start over a little bit. So, we knew Cora was coming in the heat, and we knew she was going to come in the heat. 
So I got with our local vet and um, I did a little research online and I asked him if he would prescribe me some medication. Um, it's called Megastrol Acetate. And what it does is it pretty much is like birth control for dogs. So whenever they come in heat, you start giving them a pill for eight days and it it's supposed to break their heat cycle. So we did that with Cora. As soon as we knew she was coming in heat, we could see signs and stuff. We started giving her the pill. Well, within that time, Mr. Leesky here, he still bred Cora. Well, we were watching and watching and watching. Long story short, she, uh, come here, Sissy. She, come here. Oh. She actually started getting her milk glands were swelling up and then a day or two before she was supposed to have puppies I actually noticed she had milk coming out so we just knew she was gonna have puppies she didn't get real big or anything but I just figured she was gonna have puppies so anyways she never did have puppies I know people are still wondering if she had puppies but I think she had a false pregnancy because she, ever since her due date, it's like she's been whimpering around, she's been crying, she just hasn't been herself. It's almost like she's lost weight. And um, last night, after we separated these kid goats you guys seen in the last video, she would not leave the barn right there at the gate. She would not leave. She sat there and just sat there with those babies all night long. Just like they were one of her own, she just sat there and whimpered and whimpered and whimpered. So, she's pretty upset about that. But I think she's grieving right now. Like, I think she had a false pregnancy. I think her hormones and everything went through the same type of process that they do when a mama dog has puppies. Or maybe loses puppies. I don't know. Um, I can only speak from what I think. Yeah. You're a good girl, and Leesky's a good boy. You're a good, you're a big boy, aren't you? But anyways, we're gonna, I've been trying to come out here. Rachel's been coming out here. We, we try to give them a lot of attention. Um, like right now, she don't really want attention. If she wanted attention, she'd be up here in my face just like Leesky is, but she's kind of staying to herself. She's just right here out of the frame of the camera. But anyways, um, it is what it is. Uh, I had people emailing and leaving comments do I recommend this medication and it's really too soon to know if there's any long-term effects that's going to affect Cora from it um, it absolutely worked as far as as far as keeping her from uh, having puppies she didn't get bred so it did its job on that part so anyways, I just wanted to kind of address that. I know I said we'll go talk about the goats and check out on how they're doing. There's Miss Cora right there, you guys can see her. And then I got this big hairball right here. See, she's, she, she's over there crying right now because the mamas are crying, the babies are crying, she knows everybody's sad. So, all right, I gotta get up. So I'm gonna get up for a minute and stretch my legs and we'll go check on those baby goats. I'm sorry you're sad. I'm sorry you're sad. I'm here for you. Mr. Leesky's here for you. Mama's here for you. You got all your goats. I know the babies are crying. How's your ears doing? So her ears are getting better. We just got to keep putting that blue coat on it. So it'll heal up nice and good. Yeah, it'll heal up. Can you smile? Mm -hmm. Can you smile? So I have kind of done a little uh, research online about sometimes when this happens, some animals will have like little stuffed animals and stuff that they'll carry around. Of course, we don't leave stuffed animals out here with these goats because they would eat them up. And uh, if they swallow that stuffing or whatever, it can get tangled up in their intestines and it'll actually kill them. Cause a lot of complications, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, some animals, some girl puppies, when they have miscarriages and stuff like that, they'll actually take possession over like baby goats or just something like a stick or some kind of possession. And uh, that might be part of the reason she's upset is because the baby goats are over there and then the mamas are crying and just, you know, it's a whole circle of things it could be. I don't know. Um, I know a lot of you are going to ask why. Why didn't we put Cora over with the baby goats? Um, we don't want to separate Cora and Leesky from each other because then I think they will get upset. Even though that they're both, yeah, the good girl is giving me kisses now. Even though, even though they're both attached to the goats, they're attached to each other even closer. Um, they're a pack. 
you guys know how canines are, wolves, all that. They get in packs and then they stay together pretty much for life. <clears throat> and they're a male and a female team. And that's what they are here on the farm. They're a team of livestock guardian dogs that go and protect the goats from whatever it might be. And they're best friends. I like to say they're a married couple. They do bicker just like a married couple here and there. They're, you know, they share their food good. They're, they're usually getting along good. Sometimes they play a little too rough with each other, but uh, one, one will actually tell the other one to stop. So Mr. Leesky wants to give me a hug. I don't smell a skunk on you, or, and I sure wouldn't be hugging you if you did smell like a skunk. You know that? Hmm? You know that? He's a good boy. Yeah, he's a good boy. Yeah, it's too hot for this. It's too hot for this. All right. Enough on the dogs, let's go see how the goats are doing. So, like I said, um, me and Rachel talked about, you know, this kind of helps the process and there is a couple of ways of weaning goats. And first of all, the way we did it, we chose to just take the goats and put them right across the fence. Um, <clears throat> There'll be other people that say that's, that's wrong, you shouldn't do it like this. Some people will say, uh, the right way to do it is to take the kids away from the mom and just take them far away away you know whether it be down the road or just somewhere on the farm that they can't see each other or hear each other um, we only live on a 20 acre farm here so that's kind of hard to do um, so what we chose to do is just separate them in another pen the kids can still see and hear their moms just through the fence so like that goat right there she's talking to the goats right through the fence it's no no secret um, some people, whenever they decide to wean their goat kids, they load them up in a trailer and take them straight to the cell barn or they sell them right off the farm. Um, we're not ready to do that yet because, like I said in the last video, our goats are meat goats. I'm trying to stay out of the sun. Our goats are meat goats. So if we just took our goats and sold them right now at the market, they wouldn't bring a lot of money. And <clears throat> to get the good amount of money for these goats prices for goats right now are pretty high like they're pretty good prices but they need to be in a range of about 50 to 70 pounds and that's for market meat goats now all these goats aren't going to be sold for meat i'm just talking about when we take them to market to the auction that's usually what people think um, a lot of people that are starting their own goat herds will actually They'll pick out some, usually the way it goes is the best looking ones, the flashier looking males. They will uh, get chose to be a breeding buck at a new farm. Um, goats are becoming really popular right now and uh, people are trying to get out of raising cattle. They're going to sheep, they're going to goats, in particular meat goats because these goats will clean up pastures, they'll keep your place nice and trimmed up all your trees and people have turned cattle for a long time um, if they want to clean up their fields they'll usually bring in a small herd of goats that come in behind the, the cattle even running right side along the cattle and cattle and sheep are very picky eaters and these guys are not they will eat all the weeds all the undesirable stuff that the other ruminant animals do not want so they kind of work in tandem side by side and they will clean up a place so we actually need to get some sheep or maybe a couple feeder steers or something to put in here because our goats would rather eat all the browse the leaves the poison ivy all that type of stuff than eat the grass i mean look at all this stuff right here we got all kinds of clover we got all kinds of grass in here that's some yellow hop that's some really good protein for them but there's so much food in here they just can't keep it eaten down enough and if they had their pick, they're always gonna go for the leaves of the trees. So anyways, I uh, last night, like I said, we came out here many times yesterday evening and through the night just to check on everybody. And the goat kids were in and out of the creep feeder all night long. And then even today they've been in there now, they're all back there grazing. So they're kind of starting to get out of the weaning, crying stage. You know, some of them, some of them's way over there. There's only a couple of moms along the fence here that's still talking to their babies. But even these mamas, they're not going too far away. And that's Daryl's mama right there. So <clears throat> talking about weaning, what are the next stages that uh, we need to watch for? So we kind of talked about this in our last video. Stress is one, and that can be for the babies and it can be for the mamas. 
Um, you're taking that bond, you're taking the kid away from the mom, so the mom's gonna be stressed wondering if her kid's okay, and the kids are gonna be stressed because they're wanting their mama, and they're usually milk babies, and they want, they want that milk from their mama. So they're on 24 hours of no milk now. So let me show you something here. One thing you need to watch for is the teats on these goats will start to swell up because they're used to these kids coming out and um, coming over and getting a drink of milk and draining their udders down from the milk. So now the natural process is their udders are gonna get bigger and bigger, but here in a few days to a week or so, they should start should start shrinking down a bit. Now, sometimes it's it's pretty rare for our instance, anyways. Sometimes they can get mastitis, and that's where their udders get infected. Um, sometimes if they get their udders just keep getting big and big and big, and their teats are full of milk. Sometimes if they don't get milked out, they can get an infection in there, and it can be deadly, and it can permanently damage their udder. So whenever you're weaning, that's one thing you got to look for. Um, it's very painful for them as well. So usually it's not hard to spot. And uh, that's just a couple things on that that we're watching for. And this mama right here, she's a clinger mama. She's the mom that drops her kid off at soccer practice, but she won't turn her head or leave for a little bit because she's too scared of her kid getting hurt or upset, whatever. I'm just kidding. But she's a clinger. She don't want to let go of her uh, baby yet. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. So, Cora found the shade. She's in the shade again. Mr. Leesky's over there in the shade. But they're staying right here next to the herd. So, no big bad wolves or anything like that gets them. So, anyways, I'm going to go uh, get my feed pails ready and start feeding everybody. <clears throat> and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty warm today. It's 90 degrees again, but it don't feel too bad because we got a breeze. And as long as you stay in the shade... But man, these flies are still driving me nuts. I need some remedies to get rid of flies, especially around our house. Every time we open the door, the flies just dart right in the house. And then it seems like you get them all killed and you open the door one more time and then there's 20 more you're trying to kill with the fly sweater. So you ever wish you had uh, horns? Well, I missed it. This goat was scratching her back with her horns. And this one goat, the finger mom, is gonna drive me nuts. And now you got this one doing it. If y'all quit crying for your babies, they'll be, they're, they're, they're being babies because you guys won't leave them alone. Quit yelling for them and let them just be with their friends and they got to grow up and leave the nest. You got, you mamas ain't helping none. So just for instance, this mama's udder right here, you can see her teat is getting really big. Um, naturally, it should just start going down on its own. And for some reason it doesn't what you can do to check is you'll be able to tell when that mama is walking and stuff it'll be super sore but one thing you can do is you can if she'll let you you can kind of feel on it it'll feel really hot like it has fever in it and then at that point that's when you will either want to try to milk her out um, you can call your local vet your small animal vet and that they might give you a uh, antibiotic for her and they might tell you what to do i'm not a vet i'm not going to tell you guys what to do every every uh, instance is a little different so just be mindful of that and uh, something to keep an eye on so all these mamas are getting hungry you can see there's some in there that's just laying in the barn waiting so i'll quit gabbing and uh get to feeding them so anyways guys thank you so much for watching um leave be sure to leave a comment i have talked to so many people in person especially like at the expo and stuff that says i watch your videos but i don't ever leave comments please leave a comment we love reading all the comments from you guys um you guys are super helpful you guys know so much stuff and i know people always go to youtube to learn something but you guys don't realize how much us content creators on YouTube and Facebook learn from you guys. Um, a lot of our viewers are older, so I know uh, they got a lot more knowledge than me, and they've been around the world since their first rodeo, you might say. So we always love reading the comments. You guys are always so helpful on everything, especially with Cora and the puppies and the goats, just all kinds of stuff. So thank you guys so much for leaving the comments. So like this video, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. What are you doing, Leesky man? Leesky, you're almost camouflaged.
there in that shade, buddy. <laughs> 